everyone. She's back. I have been, I have been sitting down so long. And I just want you to see what the Lord has done for me. Mm. Ha! Ain't nobody but God. I got to calm myself down because of my pressure. I mean, 151 over 107, 169 over 107. But I don't look like what I've been through. Mm. <laughs> but he's a good God. I don't know how you can watch church at home. It ain't nothing like being in the house of the Lord. And I thank God for Jesus. When I sit for long periods of time, it's my right side that has a tendency to be weak. But Satan, God rebukes you now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I walk every day for 30 minutes. Praise the Lord. So once I steady myself, Amen. I don't feel sorry for me because God has healed my body. Amen. Hallelujah. How many know he's a miracle yes, worker? <laughs> I wouldn't have confidence in a God that couldn't heal. About your concept, he's a mighty good Savior. So I just got to calm down. Lovely God. And Shell, she's so pushy, bless her heart. But my children have been there for me. And I thank you for your prayers, and I thank you for everything that you have done. It's so funny, Michelle and Nelson, they, they let me pick anything I want for dinner, and they send it to my house. I'm blessed of the Lord. But the miracle is whoever has entered into my husband. <laughs> I, I told the children, I said, somebody has kidnapped your father. And he's downstairs in the kitchen, and I'm keeping him. <laughs> so, so he asked me the other day, he says, he says uh, uh, do you uh, need me to cook? I said, no. I, and I said, uh-oh. I said, no, I think I'm going to need you. <laughs> Man, he is searing salmon and doing steak and making sandwiches and buying soup and tell me he gonna brine something and I, I say, I don't care what you do long as I ain't got to fix it. But I honor God for who he is and I honor God for that morning that I was not by myself. That my husband generally would not be there. But how many know, is there anything too hard for God? So I, I, I just thank God. I thank God for him being right there for me. He, he gets my breakfast. He's washing clothes. Glory to God. I don't know if I'm ever going to feel any better. <laughs> but how many women glad for the Lord Jesus? Yes, sir. Amen. So he has been outstanding. And he doesn't want me to go. I can't go up the steps without him. I can't come down. And I see, I'm all right with God following me around like that. But I, <laughs> so hopefully, Lord willing, I'll be able to go out and drive so I can be on my own. I don't like being pitiful. I don't like somebody waiting on me. Amen. Glory to God. I told Roy this morning, go pick that trash up by that plant because ain't nobody seen it. And he said, I say, I'll go get it, mother. I'll go get it. Amen. I'm all right. Praise the Lord. I'm fine. Praise the Lord. My pressure has come down to 100 over 78. So don't tell me what God won't do for you. So just continue to pray for me. I know that the Lord will finish the work. Yes. Praise the Lord. How many know God going to finish it? Amen. How about, you? How about that deed of God going to finish it? And so I give him glory. Thank you so much for all that you've done, your prayers and your calls and your cards and everything. I appreciate it so much. God bless you. Amen. Amen. And that's the kind of God that we serve. Yeah. Yeah. It's so wonderful.
for we have felt your presence in this place. Now as we stand, oh God, to present your word to your people, God, move me out of the way and let the glory of God step in. God, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable, oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Now, God, bless the hearer. Yeah. And God, don't let the hearer just be the hearer, but let them also become the doer of the word. Yeah. And God, that soul that is close as hell, snatch them back right now in the name of Jesus. Name. Trouble the waters today. Fill somebody that's not filled. Refill, oh God, someone that needs to be refilled. And God, we're going to give you the glory in Jesus' name. Yes, sir. Let everybody say amen. amen. Just to know... I'm not going to be long, I promise you that. Turn your Bibles, if you would, to James, the fourth chapter. James, the fourth chapter. It's one verse that I'm going to really be preaching out of, but I, I want us to start at verse number 11 and read all the way down to verse number 17, and then we're going to go to Genesis. And I'm going to use Genesis to explain to you what I'm talking about in James. Yes. Let's begin at verse number 11. Speak, Speak not, not evil, evil one, one to another, another brethren. brethren. He that speaketh Speak evil to his brother and judges his brother, brother speaketh evil of the law. And judges the law. Mm -hmm. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but is judged. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that judges another? Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city, and continue there a year, and buy, and sell, and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanishes away. That ye ought to say, If the Lord will, we will live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is said. Let the church say amen. Amen. You may be seated. Go over, if you would, to the book of Genesis, the fourth chapter. I'm pulling my thought tonight, today, out of James, the 14th, the fourth chapter, verse number 14. It says, whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, yes, yes. for what is your life? It is a vapor yes. that appears for a little time yes. and then vanishes away. away. Yes. What is your life? but a vapor. Go ahead, Bishop. What is all the drama that we're going through? The stuff that we're trying to hold on to. It is just a vapor that appears for a little time and then it vanishes away. Look at somebody and tell them these words. Say, life is too short not to give God what he wants. There's some things that as I get older, I'm learning Something, some lessons you don't learn until you get old. Yeah. It's not my elders didn't tell me. I didn't receive it because I thought I knew everything. Right. Now I know that I'm not talking about none of y'all young folks because y'all know everything. Y'all listen. Y'all listen well. Y'all listen well, okay? <laughs> There's a season in your life where you go through where you really think you know it all. I was told as I was younger, he said, well, when you're 30, you think you know everything. You spend from 30 to 40 
trying to fix what you messed up when you thought you knew everything. And you finally realize when you get into your 60s, well, God, I didn't have none of it right. And I now need to learn how to trust you like I never trusted you before. This scripture is a scripture that folk would think that they would preach at a funeral, but Paul is trying to tell young James that, son, life is just a vapor. And it's only here for a little time. And then it vanishes. Gone. Everything that you worked to have and all the accolades you thought you need is just gone. What will it profit if we would gain the entire world and lose our soul? But life is just that way. It is like a vapor. And it appears for a little. And we're looking at that window of time that he's given us. And for some reason, we act as if we got all the time in the world to get it right. But tell somebody, life is too short. Not to give God what he wants. He who knoweth to do the will of God and does it not, to them it is sin. We spend so much time rehearsing and going over and over and over again stuff that you already know that's not pleasing God. And we're overlooking this one verse that says life is as a vapor. It appears, it's in view, it is tangible for just a little time. And then it vanishes. My question is, what is so important that you can't give God what he wants now? Why are we waiting to give God what he wants when you already know now what he wants? Tomorrow is not promised to any of us, so why are you planning on giving God what he wants tomorrow when you can do it today? See, I made up my mind, I owe God a thank you today. I'm not going to wait till tomorrow to tell God thank you. I'm not going to wait until tomorrow to raise my voice and to raise my hand and say, God, you are a good God, because life is just a vapor. It is only in front of us for a little time. And it disappears. Combing my hair and I got more gray in my hair and I said, where did this come from? Then vanity kicks in and says, go get some of that black stuff. But that's not going to change what time has already done. I was looking at pictures and I remember what happened. I had hair 10 years ago. Why am I bald now? Where did the time go? Life is too short not to give God what he wants. How many of y'all know God wants a praise out of you? I'm so glad that a few of you all know that. Life is just too short. There's not enough time. That's what eternity is about. Eternity is where you can give him what he wants all the time. But God wants something on this side of eternity. That's why he created time. He put us in a space called time so that we can see what we are going to do with the time that he gave us. That's why scripture says, redeem the times for the days are what? How many of y'all know it's dark outside? 
And when it's dark outside, the only thing that brings light is a praise. I dare somebody just to give God a praise right now because it's so dark, the only thing that's going to light up the atmosphere is a praise. You would be surprised in the most darkest hours of your life what a glory to God or a thank you Jesus will do. It lights up the darkness that's even in our personal life. Oh, these last 30 days have taught me so much about praising God in the dark times. Because when you praise him in the dark time, you forget how long you've been dark. Oh God, y'all don't understand that do you? See some of y'all like to hang in darkness But when you praise in darkness For some reason you can see your way through How did I get out of this? I was praising him when I was in my darkest hour It was in my darkness that God guided me he didn't guide me when my lights were on. He guided me when my praise was on. Life is just too short. Too short not to give God what he wants. Go over to Genesis, if you would. I didn't know Mom wanted to read today. I just thought you were coming to church. I figured I'd get my job back. <laughs> <laughs> Can't stay gone long. Glory to God. <laughs> so y'all wouldn't have that if I didn't praise him. If I didn't praise him, then the devil would have kept her mouth shut. But when the devil couldn't, when the devil, when I kept giving God glory, yeah. God says, it's loose the tongue, yeah. loose the mouth, yeah. loose the matter, bring her back to where she ought to be. Yeah. Hallelujah. She may not can walk like she used to, yeah. but she can talk like she used to. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Hey, glory, glory. See, some folk can hang up your heart on a willow tree, but other folks decide, no, 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 I'm not hanging up my heart. How I many didn't know I'm not hanging up my praise? Just give them a quick praise. I'm not hanging it up. I'm not hanging it up. I refuse. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm just going. I, I, I'm going to be out of here in seven and a half minutes. No, ten minutes. I'll be out of here in ten minutes. If y'all don't shout, I'll be out of here at nine. Glory. 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 Tells my life's too short. Life's too short. Not to give God what he wants. He done already told us what he wants. He wants us to be holy, sanctified. Separated from sin. Glory, glory, glory. See, I come out here today to give him what he wants. I didn't come out here to entertain you. I come to give God what he wants. He says, I will enter. David says, I will enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. I will lift.
y'all. I don't know why we're holding back. I've learned something. If, a, if, if, if you don't praise God, a rock will do it. An inanimate object that was made by God will do it. Something that has not been designed to praise will do it. So stop thinking because you out of place with God, you don't have a right to praise him. That's how you get back in place. When you praise him in the midst of what you know is wrong. Glory, glory. I'm not gonna wait until I get it together to give him a thank you. I'm thanking him even while I'm in my mess because that's how I'm getting out. I'm gonna praise and thank my way out of it. Glory, glory, glory. I know we gotta go, but life is too short not to give God what he wants. Now, y'all sit down a minute. Let me, let me give you some information that's gonna help us. Y'all sit down. Hallelujah. We gonna dance. We gonna dance, but we gotta get some information so when we dance, we make sure we die, we're dancing on the devil's face. Yeah, we're going to dance on the devil's face. I'm not going to dance on my floor. I'm going to dance on his face. Because every time I pick one up, I'm going to say, take that. Take that. Take that. Take that. Take that. Take that. wants us to believe right. is because we all got to wear these masks yes. that we can't praise him behind the mask yes, but I can even praise God behind the mask yes, right. Ma matter of fact I think it's better to praise him behind the mask yes. cause as he's going to and fro he's trying to figure out what you praising him for right. who you yes. now let's watch this Let's watch this. Help I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you information, and I'm gonna go. Hallelujah. The only reason we're acting like this is because life's too short. Life is too short. It really is too short. For us not to give God right. what he wants. He gave us what we need so that we can give him what he wants. He has not been slack on anything. Everything you need to give him what he wants, he has already given you. Because what he's given you is breath in your body a mind to tell them thank you. It's not about your money. It's not about your position. It's about all oh, your grateful that God has kept you. Now I got in 
information, I gotta give you information. I gotta give you information. And then we're gone. Genesis, the fourth chapter. Beginning at verse number one. And Adam knew Eve, knew Eve his wife. His wife. She conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Oh my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Oh God, God. Oh God. Go ahead, Bishop. I got a problem with this scripture. I got a serious problem with this scripture. It says Genesis 4 and 1, it says, And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have begotten a man from the Lord. The word Cain simply means to acquire. That's what Cain means in the Greek, is to acquire. The problem I've got with this is in Genesis 1 and 28, God said and blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over it, over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over every thing, living thing that moves upon the earth. Problem I got with the scripture is he had no problem taking dominion and naming things. He had no problem doing a few of the things that God commanded or blessed him to do, but because of something, he did not multiply until he left the garden. Oh God, <laughs> do the research. Do the research. In the garden, God told him first to be mul to multiply. That's right. He neglected his first res his first responsibility. Mm -hmm. God help me, Jesus. Help you. Go ahead, yes, sir. The reason that serpent was able to get Eve attention is because there was a little neglect going on. Oh, they're not gonna like this today. I'm glad you got your shout on. <laughs> but I'm trying to help us now. Because when we look at the integrity of the scripture, he says in Genesis 1, he simply says, and God bless them. So in the mind of God, even though there was one, he saw the completed Adam, even when Adam didn't see it. He says them, but it was only one. And here's the problem. God has already blessed us, but instead of giving God the praise, we're looking for the them that has not been produced yet. But if God said it's going to be them, all you got to do is praise them until them shows up. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. How many of y'all are waiting for something from God? Then give God what he wants while you're waiting. See, the serpent represents death. Adam never met the serpent that was going to deceive Gal, but Adam should have been praising God and doing what God asked him to do and multiplying yes, yes. and replenishing. Mm -hmm. He had no problem naming. Yeah. 
but it was after he had his encounter with the serpent. Yeah. And that they left the garden is when Adam knew his wife yeah. and they conceived and brought forth. And, and all of a sudden, she began to say, my name, I'm going to name him Acquisition. Mm -hmm. yeah. Look what I have acquired. The Lord gave it to me. And, and when you use that word acquisition, what you're simply are doing is taking some credit for yourself. Because they had not completely learned the lesson that God was the giver of life. Oh, God help me. Jesus, huh? I'm not jumping now, huh? Look at somebody say, life is too short. Not to give God what he wants. So what am I trying to tell you? As you try to figure your way through life, keep on praising God while you're figuring it out. Don't wait until you figure it out to start giving God some glory. Because if you figure it out and give him some glory, you're going to try to take some of the credit for yourself. And God says, I'm not going to share my glory not with another So I've just come to let this church know life is really too short. Yes. Yeah. While you're trying to figure out why God brought this trial in your life, you better start trying to figure it out and wait for God to manifest. And while you're waiting for God to manifest his promise that's going to take place in your life, you need to go ahead and give God some praise. Yeah. That means you got to bless him when you have it. You got to bless him when your heaven is in process. Yeah. You got to keep on blessing him. Yeah. Go ahead, Mom, let's read. I'll just give you a little bit more revelation. I'm, uh, and she again bare his brother Abel. Oh, my God. Uh-huh. And Abel was a keeper of sheep. Here's Cain the, was a tiller of the ground. Now, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Cain's name was acquisition. Mm -hmm. But Abel's name was vapor. Vapor. Insignificant. Vapor. Something that will come and go. Oh, God, help me. I'm just trying to help us to think because a lot of us got a little bit of able. Matter of fact, most of us are full of able. Folk that are insignificant to other people. Cain had a particular attitude that did not glorify God. His attitude was the attitude of pride. Cain was so proud of his vegetables, but Cain didn't learn the lesson. God had already cursed the earth. He says that you're going to work, told Adam, because of his sin, I put you out the garden and the earth is going to be cursed and you're going to have to work. But, Ab, but, but Cain, he made it his occupation to till something that God had already condemned. Oh, God, you're getting quiet on me. They don't want to hear this truth, huh? Yeah. See, because here's the problem. Instead of giving God what he wants, we are culturing what God has already condemned. We are culturing stuff that does not glorify God. Yeah. Worry doesn't glorify God. Complaining doesn't glorify God. Whining doesn't glorify God. And we are culturing the things that will not glorify God. We are culturing stuff that will rob you of your faith. It will. We are worried about folk that don't like us when scripture says fret not to yourself because of evil doers. They soon shall be what? Cut down. Yes, that's what it says. And when we begin to nurture and culture the things that God has cursed, you will lose. Because you'll spend a lifetime trying to develop a relationship with God that you probably already had. That's true. 
if you had to just go on here and praise them. If you had to just go on here and say, God, I thank you. I know I'm messed up, but I thank you, God. God, I know I got a bad case and I can't help it, but can you help me praise you? Because I can out-praise the can't help it. I, I, I know they're not going to like this. I'm so glad that I don't preach for entertainment. I just want to give you a few facts that I pulled out then because the reality is that we all have a little able. We all got folk that are not going to like you. We all got folk that are going to think you insignificant. We all know folk that think that you don't matter. But it doesn't matter whether they think that you matter. There is something in you that God is waiting for. See, because what you're doing is waiting for them to validate what God has already anointed. He's already anointed you to give him praise right where you are. He's anointed you to tell him thank you right where you are. But you're waiting for all the stuff to line up the way you think it ought to be. But life is too short not to give God what he wants. I'm almost 70 years old now. And I keep asking myself, where in the world did time go? I don't feel 70. I don't look 70. But every time I try to do something that a 60-year-old man should do, I can't do it no more. I try to do what a 30-year-old man can do. I can't do it no more. Where in the world did time go? That's because life is too short. And I begin to think about how many times I did not give God the praise that I should have given him when I had the strength to give it to him. But I made a declaration, whatever I got left, I'm going to bless him. I'm going to praise him because life is really too short. Not to give God what he wants. I'm trying to help that one that is on the brink. Know that you're messing up. Know that you've got problems going on in your life. Know that you're struggling with the flesh. But if you would just start giving God real praise. I'm not talking about that behind closed doors praise because you can praise him behind closed doors. He see you, but he won't receive you. But you got to give him an outright praise. Public thank you. A public glory to God. You got to give him a praise so that when a little short woman see you, she can come and say your speech betrays you. You can act one way, but you're talking another way. That kind of forces you to get on what side you belong on. How many of y'all know you need to be on the Lord's side? And every now and then you need a jump to get you back on the Lord's side. That's what a good praise does. So you do the research, you find out when Adam was born. Go ahead, Mother, read. And in process of time. And in process of time. It came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground mm -hmm. an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offerings. But unto Cain and to his offerings he had not respect. And Cain was very wrong. And his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou, why art thou wroth? How many of y'all know when you get upset with God, God will speak to you and say, What you mad about? That's right. Yes, he will. <laughs> you see somebody that you don't think deserves what they get, getting it. 
You see somebody else that you don't understand how they still getting healed and you still broke. And so God will come to you and say, well, what you upset about if you give me what I want? See, Cain was only giving, only concerned about giving God what he wanted God to have. Because Cain was giving to get. But Abel was giving because God wanted it. How many of y'all are giving God what he want for nothing? Yeah. I'm not praising God because I want something from God. I'm praising God because he is God. What Cain did, Cain gave God what he wanted because he wanted something from God. But God says, I don't want your stuff. I want what I want. And we have got to stop trying to understand the mind of God and become obedient yes. to God. Yes. Because life really is too short. Yes. Yes. Just look at your watch. You don't have enough time to give God a makeup praise. You don't have enough time to give God a manipulated praise. I'm talking about one of the manipulated praise. I praise you, God, but I expect you to do this. God, I praise you and I don't expect nothing. Because when I think about what you already done, when I think about how you already delivered me, when I think about how you already kept me, Yeah, life is too short. Life is too short. Even if you live to be a hundred, life is too short. Not to give God what he wants. Let me show you something here. Read, Mom. If thou doest well. If you do as well, Cain. Shalt not thou be accepted. In other words, I'm not showing favoritism like your mama did to you. Mm. Cain got the way he was. Because his mama took credit for what God had promised. See, too often we take God's promise and act like we had something to do with it. I ain't had nothing to do with mother's healing. Only thing I could do is praise God while God heals her. And even though it's not complete, I'm not waiting for it to get complete to give him some praise. I'm still praising him for healing her of cancer. Yes. Now I got to add this to my praise. But I'm giving him a yesterday praise for a tomorrow victory. Because God is a God of promise. And I'm not serving him for the promise. I'm serving him because he's God. And I kept praising him until that became a relationship. In other words, have y'all, y'all ever understand the, the, the plight between generations? You got, you know, generations. Okay, the first generation is always the generation that works hard to get. First generation. Man, we work hard. Started with nothing. Then the second generation comes. And when the second generation comes, they work to keep with the first generation had put together. But the problem is that the third generation is living off the resources of generation one and two. So that's the generation of privilege. Yes, sir. That's who they are. See, if y'all read the story, y'all don't read enough papers and nothing. But there was the Hiltons and you got the Hilton conglomerate, the Hilton Hotels and all that, that was the father, the grandfather. Then Carlton Hilton was the son. But then he had a daughter by the name of Paris. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The father, the grandfather started with nothing, lost money, made money. Yes. 
The father of the grandfather, the son, saw his father work and he got work ethic and he kept on working. Yes, sir. But the third generation, the only thing she knew how to do was be famous. The problem with this generation, this generation don't understand the hard work that went before you got here. But now you are walking in all of what God has done. So all you know how to do is be famous. I knew I was going to get myself in trouble. But the good thing that I see here at this church, and this is the good thing, we, got, we are in our fourth generation. I was the third generation. You're the fourth generation. Do the math. From Bishop, he came in, got saved, got filled, but I came in through Small Woody Williams. I'm in generation three that has not forgotten generation one and generation two because I was the third generation that held on and made up my mind that I was not going to let go. And now I'm about to step into the fourth generation while the third generation is coming up to remind the third generation, don't you let go. Yeah. Because it's going to be, everybody in that third generation is not going to be a failure. Yeah. That's right. There are some temple babies who realize that God is the one that gave them strength. But Paris Hilton, all she knew was how to be famous because she grew up in privilege. Never had to worry about where it was coming from. And she lived as what she had was never going to be ended. But let me tell you something, God's not in it, it will run out. Go ahead, mom, I'm almost done. If thou dost well, shalt not thou be accepted, and if thou dost not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Mm -hmm. And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth. That which he thought was most valuable. Yes. yes. The ground that he was so proud of. Mm -hmm. God recursed it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me tell you something. What will it profit us yes. if we gain this whole world? and miss Jesus. In all of what we do, if you do not catch a hold of the fact that God wants something from you and you are not inadequate to give it to him. The devil wants you to believe that you don't have it in you to give him what he wants. I've come to tell you, if you give him what you what he wants, he'll give you what you need. And before he gives you a piece of money or a healed body, he'll give you the mind to know that you need him in your life. Because you will come to a realization that I've got to seek him first and his righteousness and everything else will be added. You can't get it until you give him what he wants. Yes. Just look at somebody and tell them life is too short. Life is too short. Not to give him what he wants. Listen to what he says. He says in verse 7, If thou doest well, thou shalt 
not. If thou doest, if thou doest well, shall not thou be accepted? And if thou does not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee it shall be his desire. Yes. And he shall rule over you. Listen to what it says. It says, and you know if you do what is right, I will accept you. That's right. But if you don't, sin has already attacked you. That sin want, will want to control you. But you've got to control it. You cannot let sin control your life. I'm not going to say you would ever have a bad thought but you've got to know how to cast it down and bring every thought under the obedience of Christ. Life is just a vapor for only a little bit of time and then it vanishes. It vanishes. We don't have time to play games. We need to give God what he wants. He says, the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. He says, I stand at the door and knock if any man open. He says, I come in and I sup with him. The whole reality is all God wants you to do is say, yes, Lord. From the bottom of your heart, to the depths of your soul. That's it. Yes, All he wants you to do is say, yes, Lord. Completely. Yes. yes. Not a halfway yes. Your soul needs to cry. Yes. Is there one online? Dial that phone number. Yes, Lord. Is there one in the room? Yes, Lord. From the bottom, From the bottom of to the very depths, to the depth of my soul. Oh yes, Lord. Yes. Lord. Oh my soul, my soul, my soul. My soul says yes. Everybody standing. I said yes, Lord. If you don't know Jesus today and you want to get to know him, I know everybody in the room is saved and filled. But if you're watching online, dial that phone number. We'll baptize you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. We'll work with you. And the Bible says you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Life is too short not to give God what he wants. He wants you, you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. From the bottom. From the bottom of my heart. To the very depths. Just look at somebody as we're about to dismiss, say, life is too short. Not to give God what he wants. Come on, tell him, get started now. Give it to him now. Give him what he wants now. Oh, oh, oh yes, Lord. Completely. My soul, my soul.